It's time for Veterans Issues, the show that brings you information about veterans, military, and their family. Now here's your host, Ken Rodgers. Welcome to Veterans Issues. Appreciate you tuning in this week. Ken Rollins. And today I've got a couple of guests here that's going to there from Family Endeavors. And you folks that are veterans or your spouses, or even if you're a neighbor of a veteran or know a veteran, this is for you. Stay tuned. We're going to come back. We're going to talk with Wendy. And i got to make sure I got this Vitra. It, it spells a little bit different, but we'll, uh, we're going to talk with Vitra and Wendy. Stay where you are. Get your pen. Be right back. Welcome back to End of Veterans Issues, Ken Rollins, and we're talking with a couple of people today from Family Endeavors, and we want to hear about that new program that I've heard about the first time. It may not be a new program, but it's new to me. So welcome to the show. I want to give a uh, Vitra, <laughs> Vitra Hill, and, and the reason I say it, folks, is if you see on the screen, her name is spelled different, and so it's not, it doesn't look like Vitra, but it's pronounced V-E-V-E-T-R-A, but it's spelled different yeah so that's why i'm having a hard time with it. and wendy i don't have any problem with but we <laughs> got right. we got to do this fist bump thing yeah <laughs> you like that yeah, I do like you really got I do something like to know <laughs> anyhow we uh, family endeavors is something i have never heard about the program till a guy down in uh, pell city told me about it and you help veterans homeless veterans and I, I don't know if you have others but we'll get into all that and uh i don't know which one of you to start with but you are the uh, program manager, Wendy, mm -hmm. and uh, you're the lead case manager, right, yes. Peter? Mm -hmm. And what? So you mentioned background. One of you on uh, on family endeavors. What you do? Just a basic. What you do? Okay, family endeavors is a national nonprofit organization. We are. Um, it comes from an initiative from President Obama. He wants to end homelessness by 2015. So we got a grant from the VA administration to um, offer home, home stabilization and uh, prevention services to veterans and their families. To offer what now? Home stabilization and prevention services. Mm -hmm. it's, it's in order to keep the veteran housed. Okay. Um, and those that are homeless, chronically homeless, is to get them stable housing in the community. Is it basically uh, just about housing or is it? Housing okay. first is our model, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you don't do anything to do with the medical referring them for what medical. we do is when they come in for services the first thing we do is we link them back into the VA system okay mm -hmm. you hook them up through the VA mm -hmm. Birmingham. okay and what what part do you you want to add on to that tack on to it any well I, I do case management um, and what we do is once the veteran actually qualifies for our program we come in we complete a thorough assessment to determine what their needs are of course it's housing but there's other domains that we address um, in our housing stabilization plan, and we um, use that plan to create the services that we're going to offer um, for the veteran. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, people that that are not aware, and I plead guilty of the uh, how many homeless veterans they are in America. And when you said uh, that the president uh, authorized this, I'm aware that uh, you know getting rid of the caseload of the claims that's been filed and getting rid of where we would never have a home another homeless veteran. Uh, we shouldn't even be talking about that. Exactly. How sad that we talk about mm -hmm. someone who served their country and has no place to live. But there are circumstances that are always not the government's fault that had to happen. You know, mm -hmm. it happens in the, the domestic part of the relationship sometimes that people become homeless. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll just tell you this. I had a lady on the show a couple of years ago. She serves on the State Board of Veterans Affairs. I mean, she became a homeless veteran. Uh, she was married and she went to uh, Iraq when she came home after 10 months she went to her apartment her key wouldn't fit and all this time she was conversing back and forth with her husband and uh, her check was going in direct deposit she came home she said her key wouldn't fit that door there's a people living there had been living there for nine months of the 10 months she was gone wow. And so she had no place to live, no family, and the bank account was gone. Wow. So of no fault of hers, mm -hmm. she became a homeless veteran. 
And you imagine a 35-year-old female. And we've had some here in my county the same way. So uh, it's not that they got themselves in that fix because of mismanagement or something like that. But sometimes things like that happen that's out of the control of the individual. So, and, and when you talk about once they've been qualified, I guess this would be you, Vitra, uh, what are the qualifications, which are one of you, but you mentioned qualification. How does someone qualify for, for help as a homeless? Uh, okay. Well, first of all, you, there has to be a veteran in the home. Um, they have to have an honorable or other than honorable discharge. Um, each county that we service have a um, AMI that we go by, and that's determined by county and the household size. So um, those are the qualifications, the main qualifications that they have. So we were talking out in the green room, but you know, a lot of the veterans and the homeless are not gonna be watching this show. That's why I said I wanted, if you know a veteran, even if you don't know one, you're in a car and driving around, you see somebody a homeless veteran. Uh, these numbers that you got, they got in the control room, they're on the screen. The 205 numbers are gonna be displaying here right now. And someone write that number down and carry it with them at all times. If mm -hmm. they see someone as a homeless veteran, or know somebody that knows somebody that is in that case that is everybody's got a part to play in this thing right, right and they refer them to you and somebody walks in or comes in on their behalf can someone a relative of or something like that come in and say my brother's homeless can they do that for him yes we actually have um, clients that call a relative may call in for them and say hey I have a, a family member that is a veteran. Um, how do they qualify for your program or do they qualify? And we'll discuss that with them and we encourage them to bring the veteran in. So we get that contact information and we do reach out to that veteran. Well, Y'all actually go out there to the veteran where they are on we the street? Will, yeah, we do, we do yeah. streets, we do community partnership. Whichever way we can touch a veteran is what we're trying to do. We, um, we also have a good re working relationship with landlords because veterans that are living in an apartment complex, the landlords know the ones who are struggling to pay their rent, who are struggling to pay their utilities. Mm -hmm. they, they are our best contacts in the community. But like really? you said, we, anybody that have ears, we're willing to talk to them about them. Well, I would think right opposite for a landlord, especially I would look at landlords as greedy. You've you're got someone living in one of your units and now you're gonna help them get in another unit? Well, it's, so, it's to help them prevent them from becoming homeless. I got you. So it, we're actually helping the landlord because we yeah. can assist them with their utilities and with their rental payments. So, But not living in the same place they're living now. Yes. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Prevention. That's yeah. So you've got a veteran there that's struggling and about to be homeless. Mm -hmm. So to prevent them from becoming homeless, you step in. Is that yes, what I mean? exactly. Okay, now that clears that up. Cause, we mm -hmm. offer two categories. We have like a category of prevention. And then we have those chronic, uh, chronic homeless individuals that we help as well. Because I don't know anybody that don't drive around somewhere, Tom Simon, to see somebody standing on the side of the road and exactly. saying that. And then, like over to Jimmy Hell Mission over in Birmingham, do you do I ever go to places like that, or do? Yeah. Oh yeah. I see both All of the you. Time. Yeah. <laughs> All wow. the time. Yeah, we do street. Like she said, we do street outreach. Uh, we do go to all the shelters. All the food banks, all churches, mm -hmm. barber shops, restaurants, anywhere. That's funny you said that because we—I talked to the, the pastors on here before. We we know we got a lot of veterans coming home from Iraq, from Afghanistan. And the one place that we need to get get this information we need to the veterans is to the churches exactly. because uh, there's not a lot of jobs out there. And so we put twenty thousand. We start start bringing twenty thousand people back to Alabama from Afghanistan, a uh, good portion of those are going to be without jobs. Right. And without jobs leads to homelessness. Well, and that's another part that we offer at our agency as well. We can offer um, assistant employment assistance, career assistance, yeah. where you can come in and talk to a job coach, um, go over some jobs. We can link you to those jobs. We have people that actually come in, um, yeah. um, employers. we got to go to a break now. They're, okay. they're yelling in my ear. We'll come back. We're going to pick up on the jobs. Stay where I'll be right back with Vitra and welcome back to Veterans Issues talking to Vitra and Wendy and we're talking family endeavors and we're talking about homeless veterans and how they this organization helps and when we left the break we were talking about jobs uh, we talked about getting them housing everything you was telling about the job and I interrupted you 
finish that out if y'all will. Yeah. We have a job coach. We subcontract with a job coach, and what the veteran can do is come in and they're looking for employment. We can assist them in looking for employment. We can assist them uh, with interview skills and writing their resume. Wow. What a, uh, that's some notes. I'm going to look at that. But when you're talking about that, what are some of the other, we talked about the housing and we talked about the jobs. What are some of the other things you do? Is that pretty much? We have uh, financial counseling, consumer credit counseling. We have legal and we, um, like the housing coordinator. And the housing coordinator go out and find the housing for them. Okay, you said financing count. If someone is out of a job and they're in a homeless veteran situation, where does the financial counseling come from? What's that about? Well, you they don't want, have any finance. <laughs> well, you want to check your credit, you know, because okay. apartment complexes check your credit. So we work with them on building, rebuilding their credit, looking at, you know, better ways to budget their money, what they need to clean up on their credit report in order to get housing. Oh, that's good. That that goes in all of life, right there. To be mm -hmm. be sure to do that, and. Uh, and then I said, where, do, where does Family Endeavors get their funding? Where do you get yours? From? We got a $2 million grant from the VA. Um, so that's where we got our funding. It, that was a one year. We actually just got approved for another year. Um, okay. So you've already got one now you're going on another. Mm -hmm. Must be doing something right. We're doing great. <laughs> well, we, in the grant, we said we would service 1,000 veterans. We are up to 720. 730 yeah. right now. So uh, in the grant in September the 30, we would definitely hit a thousand veterans. So we're doing very well. Yeah, the well, folks that that know me, that you know, I I was telling you, I I didn't believe in homeless veterans, but on the state board of veterans affairs, we now have a department of uh, homeless veterans. And when we first, I was real skeptical about that mm -hmm. because, as I said, a lot of home veterans are homeless by choice. Mm -hmm. And uh, the report came back that. 70% of our homeless in Alabama live in wooded areas uh, off of the interstates and the woods and stuff. And where we're sitting right now, just a block from us, is a homeless veteran uh, conclave in the woods over there. I might want to go join them sometime, but I'd like to leave. We're going to stop by. <laughs> all these bugs and stuff. It's like camping out. I don't mm -hmm. like camping out. That's the way I grew up. I grew up camping out, mm -hmm. but it was called living. I know. <laughs> yeah. Holes in the floor. And at that, uh, the, where, where are you? You're in Birmingham, and I, our, your phone number's up here. You work out of Birmingham. Do people walk in? Is it just the one location? We have a loca location in Northport and Montgomery, but we service 43 counties in Alabama. Okay. So you can walk in, um, definitely the Birmingham location, because we have a bigger staff there, and you can walk in, or you, you can see our outreach people or our case managers mm -hmm. out in the street and do an intake there. Mm -hmm. One good thing about our agency is you can do an intake. You can come in with a utility bill. We'll do an intake. We'll send you over to case management, and we could possibly pay that utility bill that day. I'll be right over. <laughs> <laughs> the feature of that, that you, you work directly with the, the veterans, right? Yes. They, uh, can you tell me some of the things that uh, your most memorable cases i know that sometimes they get emotional around people like that right. you'd have to be being your business yeah do you you find something that's just really hit the, hit the bottom because mm -hmm. of something you never expected or yeah i mean we meet, put you on the spot i know yeah because it's so many like we've on we've been operating since um what november october, october. and i mean we've we've helped so many people but we have had those that just really stand out like when you have um Perfect example, we had a, um, a veteran before, him and his wife, and completely homeless. They did not know where they were going to go. Wife had had a heart attack and was um, turned around and had a stroke. So she turned, she, they needed somewhere to go upon her discharge. And we were able to, you know, get them housed and so she can go home and fully recuperate. So those are the things that make what we're doing even more rewarding. Did you help them? Yes, we did. How did you feel when they got help? Oh, well... He had been down on his luck. He had tried to, you know, get help from other places. And, you know, he came back into my office and, you know, he was just like, thank you for making me feel human again, you know, and treat me like a yeah. person. Mm -hmm. So that just speaks volume about, yeah. you know, what we're doing and the, and the veterans that we're serving. So. And contrary to what some people would believe, people don't like being down, taking they things. They mm -hmm. like to be able to help themselves out. But the minute you have to walk in somewhere and you're, Shoulders hanging down, your head hanging down, you, you just you hit the bottom, and then there's somebody 
of each your steps up, getting paid to do your work, but you get a little bit of compassion, a little bit of fire in you about, I'm going to help this person, you know, because they deserve it. Right. And they all do, but they do. there's, uh, I, I, as a veterans advocate, I get to help a lot of people. Very fortunate, I'm blessed on the, to do that. Mm -hmm. And uh, just to point them in the right direction. Sometimes you just, that is one of the biggest walk in your place and say, and you say, okay, hold on, I'll get somebody down to VA. Mm -hmm. And you've done something worth that's priceless. You can't put a price. That's one of the things, I know you're going to say it too. <laughs> one of the things we talk about all the time. Yeah. Actually, in this job, of all jobs I've had, you, we can see immediate response from the veteran. We are actually helping them. They walk out and they come back so excited. You know, they have maintained their homes, um, gotten mm -hmm. jobs, stable employment. It feels good. I mean, you served yeah. our country and we've been able to help yeah. you. And a lot of yeah. them do have pride and don't want to receive the services. But once we have good case managers we and do. once they talk to them and say, you know, this is something that's going to benefit you. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's something the government is going to give back to you. Mm -hmm. Take it. And they have been receptive of it and very good. Well, one of the things that I ask people when I'm speaking to groups, I say, everybody just reach in your purse and pull out a check <laughs> and sign that check and hand it to them. And I give them a little time. To do. Nobody ever gives me a check. Mm -hmm. But all those people that's come in your office, sometime in their life, they wrote a check to the United States government. Mm -hmm. And they signed their name and they left the mount open. You can take my life, my legs, my arm, my brain. Right. They yeah. wrote that check and they, so any services you give them came from the Veterans Administration, which is obligated to take care of them. And they only take care of them because they've already earned that. Right. So if they raise their hand, sign that check, they shouldn't hold their head down to walk in and let you folks help them. And that's what we tell them. We try to encourage them to let them know that do not look at this as charity. You know, this, this, is, is, this yeah. is a fellow man helping another fellow man. You exactly. know, so we really, we don't want them to feel you know, bad about having to come to us because at some point everybody needs help. Right. A veteran walks in and they don't meet the criteria, they're not qualified for your services, what happens to them? We do not turn them around. Mm -hmm. We refer them to any agency that can help them in the community. Mm -hmm. And they can come back and say, well, that agency didn't help us. We're going to refer them somewhere else. We're mm -hmm. going to help. We're going to keep trying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We got about a minute or so. What, what am I leaving out here that we need to talk about? That y'all want to elaborate on? Well, I think the biggest thing is just knowing that we're here. Um, we are, like I said, we have outreach people that go out in the community. Um, we go in the woods. We're going to stop by where you told us. <laughs> You're <laughs> going to get bug bit. <laughs> oh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> We've been in wars. <laughs> we're going to stop by and let them know that we're here and that this is an agency that's going to be around, and we really want the veterans to come in. If you are struggling with ev eviction, or if you're homeless, just come see us. Just talk to us for a minute and see if we can help you. And if they can't get you, they can get me, and I can get in touch with you. Exactly. I got every way, email. I got all the <laughs> stuff on you. Get the goods on y'all. Yeah. yeah. But I'm gonna tell you something. As a veteran, I appreciate the fact that people like you do this stuff, and uh, and the veterans out there, the the community is better off for it, and uh, America's better off for it. Exactly. So I thank you for doing it. Thank, thank you for you. coming down here today. Appreciate it. Thank you. Here we go. Thank you. Look at you. You like that, right? Yeah. Right, we got, that's uh, Family Endeavors. We got to go to a break. Got come back. I got news that you can use. Stay right there and get the pen. Welcome back to Veterans Issues. I appreciate folks coming in from Family Endeavors and doing the show. I hope you'll, you wrote that number down. If you didn't, uh, you got my number and I'm going to put, make sure that you got my new contact number. Here's 256-239-9234. You can call me at that number, you can leave a message, and you can text me at that number. And you, or you can uh, friend, uh, ask friend requests on Facebook, or my email address is on the screen here somewhere, like right Vanna White thing. You can do that, and uh, I will return your call, take your call, or get back to you. So, and I wanted to do this because I'm going to get in trouble if I don't. He's a very dear friend. He's been in education so many years. He's, uh, when you say education, you have to think of it. His name is Willing. William Hutchins, and William is, uh, has been around here for a long time. He, my daughter was in grammar school with him, saw him the other day, and he watches us religiously, and, uh, and we appreciate him doing that. And Willie Hutchins, this is for you, and thank you for all you've done changing lives for the children in Calhoun County and uh, in the education system. And anybody that has an automobile that you don't, don't need, but you've got an extra automobile that's serviceable, 
I got to use that same number. You contact me. We'll give you a tax write-off through the, the 501c3. And same thing as if you gave it to Goodwill and you get a tax write-off and you get the money you're asking for the old car that you don't need anymore. And we'll go to that. That'll give to a widow woman, a grandmother that needs to uh, go to the store, needs to go get medicine, needs to go to the doctor. And that's that's a big help right there. And you get your you get your thanks for that. And I want to remind everybody about the law enforcement tag. I always tell you about that. That is a beautiful tag. It goes with every kind of car. You don't have to be in law enforcement to get one. But uh, when you go get your uh, tag renewed, uh, tell them you want to see the law enforcement tag. And just between me and you, but don't tell anybody, but if, if there's a police officer behind you and you're kind of breaking the speed limit by half a mile an hour, you got that law enforcement tag on there. I bet you they say, good people. Let them go. <laughs> just guessing. Didn't say they'd do it. But uh, you know, I want to thank WAC TV 24 for doing this for about five or six years. We've been we've been talking to you, coming on t uh, TV here and talking about veterans issues. Even though on my dang tag it says another uh, station before we came here, I'm just too lazy to put the other patch on. But it's WEAC TV 24. So in case you were looking at it, if you want to go to the website, WEAC TV 24 Veterans Issues, you can pull up all of our shows and see if there's one on there that you'd like to look at if you missed it, or you can recommend it to someone else that, uh, uh, to, to do that. Now, the uh, Chihaw Animal Shelter, they need items that you can help them with, and, and this is not a veterans issue because veterans do have animals, but uh, their number is 256-241-3647, and that's, uh, they need blankets and treats and things like that. For the animals and uh or you might be looking for one that's the number to call on that good folks doing good work uh pay it forward i hadn't told you that in a long time i always i say always i always end up when i'm in a drive fast food drive in or whatever i pay for the car behind me or sometimes i pay in the front of it i never know what the who these people are and uh i make their day and i make my day too so uh, think about that when you're out there. If you really want to feel good, make somebody else feel good. Ask the uh, operator on the other end of that line at the burger place to pay it forward. If you'd like one of those canes like I have, his phone number is 256-237-4743. Let's see who the shout-outs this week. Oh, yeah, the shout-outs this week go out to the, especially the Oxford VA clinic, all the clinics in our ju jurisdiction here, and especially the VA hospital over in Birmingham. Doing great work. We'll see you next week here on Veterans Issues. Salute.